Uh, Jotman says, check the intro music real quick. Okay, here you go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 132 for Thursday, the 22nd of June, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends celebrate uh, all things geek with their guest. And tonight our guest, Clint Knorr, stand-up comedian, all-around funny dude, and uh, a man with a story. Like, we, we like to have those. So, how you doing, Clint? Hello. How are you? Thanks for having <laughs> Kent, uh, I see you laughing. Like, that one even got you by surprise, didn't it? Yeah, no, that was a fantastic intro. Uh, thanks for the for the setup and the assist on that one, Jotmon. <laughs> uh, man, it is... It is hot as blazes in the Southwest right now, and my AC is not working up to par. Oh. So if if I look like I'm sweating, it's probably because I'm sweating. Isn't that the golden sheen of success in life? <laughs> uh, no, I have a lack of that right now. <laughs> uh, Clint, you don't know anything about the lack of a golden sheen of success in life, do you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like I told all my best jokes while we were doing sound check. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any way to prove that to the people who are listening? Um, but they're just going to take our word for it because we're trustworthy. <laughs> all right. Well, seven minutes we burned, guys. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so it's uh, it's been kind of a, a crazy week for all of us, I'm guessing. Uh, Clint, you're actually like on the road right now. You're in New York City. You're, you're performing like... I don't know if you're on the road, but you're definitely like, I looked at your schedule. You're just slammed. You got multiple shows a week, every week. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah, all the time. Yeah, as much as I can, I guess. Yeah. I haven't been on the road since, uh, for a month now. That's good. Oh, oh uh, the, stuff. Was that the last time the towel was, was washed? Oh God knows the towel. <laughs> the towel. I, I don't know when the previous owner washed it. <laughs> it's a second. <laughs> <It's>, like, <laughs> this whole room i don't know if you know about anything about new york city living but this whole room is uh it's, it's a six by six and it's put together by charity it's nothing it's all it's uh, crazy i was um, given oh, man, this the, bed the, the affluent life yes. of a comedian i guess yeah oh man crushing it <laughs> there's a reason why i was available every date you gave me <laughs> 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 we're challenging oh, yeah. any of them and all of them please <laughs> just well initially initially i asked you for uh for for the 15th and you're like i like I might, <gasps> I might have a phone call and then i was like well what about this date and you're like yes what about this date yes what about this date yes i was like oh so just that the one the first day was the only like if i had just like stopped asking you about dates i'd have thought you were just the busiest dude in the world <laughs> oh man i wish i had kept that, <laughs> that facade um, I know. Hey, uh, Kent. Um, so I know you've been you've been dealing with some heat. Mm. Is that yeah. is that like just a human thing, man? So it's hot as hell for people, right? We can we can like try to find cool places, you know, hopefully somewhere with AC or a fan or, or drink soda. some some cold water, like a cold glass of ice water like I've been downing all day today. Um, but pets don't have it so good, man. Animals yeah. a lot of times get left outside, um, left in cars, God forbid, but people do that. Um, so on Father's Day, this Sunday, our dogs were going ape inside the house, and that usually means that somebody's at the door. So we go to check the porch, and sure as shit, someone was at the door, but it wasn't a human. It was a dog. We had a dog sitting on the front porch like, hey, how you doing? So we're like, what the hell? So we, <laughs> so we put the do our dogs in their kennels so they would settle the hell down. Right. And we opened up the door, and this dog just like walked right in like, hey, I'm here now. <laughs> and so we, we spent the next few hours looking for the owners on uh, – there's like a, a local Facebook group where you can post messages and whatnot. It's like right. it, it was intended for selling things, but it, it's really more like a community messaging board. And uh, we ended up finding the owners eventually. Uh, turns out they only live like six houses down from us. Uh, but prior to that, I was about to give up and I called Animal Control. And mm -hmm. because it was Sunday, 
they only had a, a, a like an on call guy and he wasn't obligated to do anything. He told me that the the proper way to handle this is to go drop the dog off at the shelter, which the drop off point is a metal cage that's sitting in the sun. I was like, no. Yeah, that's like, we drove over there and took a look at it and I was like, nope, that should ain't happening. And, you know, even if I have to deal with this, this like super energetic giant dog. For, <laughs> what what oh, kind of I dog was it? Uh, he was a pit bull. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, that's that's the dog that you want to just, hey, come on in, buddy. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, he was super friendly, super nice. But man, like he was willful. <laughs> he was going to go where he wanted to go. Yeah. Uh, there was no way I was going to leave him in the sun like that. So. Uh, and, and luckily like the perfect timing, cause we got home with the dog and we got a message from the actual owners. Mm. So it all ended well. Uh, thankfully that this dog didn't have to suffer in the sun much longer. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. How um, populated is that town? <laughs> um, it, not, not a lot. It's like probably 20,000 people or something like it's, that. It's, uh, it's somewhere in between. Small- yeah. It, I was going to say it's in between like a full fledged, no shit, big grocery store. And a Best Buy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, they don't have a Best Buy, but they got the big-ass grocery store. So it's it's in that little flux right there. I don't know what that number is, but that's where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you, you a dog well, guy, Clint? Yeah, totally. I can't yeah, have so you, Yes. Absolutely. So you wouldn't have left the dog in the sun either, I imagine? No. No. Even a child killer like that thing. Um, <laughs> I would have to... <laughs> I would have to get some some sort of mercy. Uh, I you know I should say I've never actually had any experience with a pit bull. Like I I, I imagine myself being as uh, compassionate as I would with any animal, but uh, I've never seen one that wanted to take my throat out. So that could be a different story. Yeah, well, pit bulls get a they get a bad rap. They're actually some of the sweetest dogs that you will ever meet. Um, they they definitely have a bad so reputation. This- yeah. Okay. So this one was uh, docile to you. I mean. Oh yeah, obviously. absolutely. Yeah, he was he was all about the kisses and wanted to sit in your lap and stuff like that. But you know, the dog was probably like ninety pounds. Well, he he no- probably knew that you were the only one that knew how to work the AC. And if you took you out, he was exactly. just going to be another hot house like the one he left. You know, like. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody wants yeah, there that had to be a reason that he escaped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, um, <laughs> so typically on Father's Day, like I'm not I'm not big on Father's Days and and. My wife is always just like, you know what I want for Mother's Day? Just the day left alone, you know? Um, So I I, I wouldn't expect anything for Father's Day, but I got something. Do you recognize this? Uh, Looks like a wooden block. It is. Now, if I told you there were uh, 50 some odd of these in a container, what would you think? Um, It would be a set of blocks. It would be for... Um... I don't know, Clint. What would you say fifty of those blocks would be? Oh, I, I think I know this one. Uh, <laughs> that, is that uh, human-sized Jenga? It is. It's giant oh. Jenga. Ah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> they remember, so happy for you right. they remember me telling them stories about going down to South by and playing giant Jenga. So they bought me a giant Jenga set for Father's Day. That's awesome. That is that is very cool. So way cool on the on on the part of the kids. Apparently, my wife was like, oh, "I don't know what the hell he wants," um, and they were like, "Oh, we know." <laughs> so, yep, yep. six foot Jenga. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a uh, it, it, well. You have the you have like the really big ones with the blocks that are like you know you you even when you're drunk you can't carry them sons of bitches, and then you got like the size right. down from that that like they have it. Uh, uh, whatever that last bar was we were at Kent uh, when we were playing with Dills and and Jerry and all that. This, oh yeah, this, it's like the rooftop. Yeah, this deal. this set is that size, so it's like perfect. Right on, right on. I figured you, your kids are probably testing you to see if you can build a treehouse. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, Good those blocks. Yeah. Look, look. I'm just gonna say that I bought this house. That's all the house they're getting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Father's Day gifts, my my kids know that I'm a fan of the dark crystal Mm -hmm. and uh they got me an addition to my pop collection kira and fizzgig 
Oh, that didn't look like the Fizz gig I remember. She was blonde, had long curly hair. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, That's awesome. A, uh, a girl in our hometown, it was actually the younger sister of one of our classmates. Uh, we named her Fizz gig. Mm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Dark Crystal character, uh, Fizzgig, the little uh, dog-like thing that just makes a whole lot of noise and doesn't really do anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we named her Fizzgig uh, for no apparent reason. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was completely uh, completely isolated from the character in the movie. <laughs> and, and, we, and we certainly weren't stoned when we thought of it. Um so <laughs> could in the case. <laughs> so yeah, but the Dark Crystal coming back on Netflix, like I, I can't understate the importance of that uh as a prequel, a series for as a prequel coming to Netflix. It's gonna be amazing. Um what, I'm, I, I'm sorry guys. I'm completely, I'm completely lost on everything movies and television. What 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 is uh the Dark Crystal? Ah, so it's one of the classics from the eighties. It's actually a, a Jim Henson production. That's it's all puppets or well or people in costumes I guess um, you don't actually see a human on the screen um, it's a, okay. a fantasy story um, it's basically about a, a a couple of characters that are on a quest to save the world basically like your standard fantasy story but it's told in such a, a unique way with puppets uh, that's absolutely amazing. If, if you haven't seen this, you need to find it and watch it. It's really cool. Oh, okay. Yep. You um, know, I think I, yeah, this is vaguely, vaguely familiar. You probably watched it when you were six and got freaked the yeah. fuck out and tried to block it out. <laughs> <laughs> like many things when I was six. <laughs> Um, is that what so, he called it? So um, this is definitely one of those things that uh, that matures over time. The more you watch it, and the older that you get, you understand more of a nuance with it. And it's it's really really fantastic. And and there the prequels coming Netflix, and I don't know I don't even know when it's coming. I just know that it's coming, and it's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah, I think it's 2018 uh, is what they said. So yeah. yeah, I'm super looking forward to that. Um, hey Clint, what was the uh, if you had to if you had to go on a limb, what was the geekiest thing you did all week? Oh Jesus! The thing you sent me to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I downloaded Skype for this. Uh, so <laughs> you, you're doing so well with coming out of your shell. <laughs> I really am. You guys are really proud. <laughs> We're all about introducing people to new things on this show. Yeah. Hey. Um. So I love. And, and apparently, you tried out FaceTime earlier this week too. How, how'd that go? I had to remember my Apple ID. That was an ordeal. <laughs> Past that, <laughs> once we got there, everything was executed well. It was good. I uh, Actually, this issue came up uh, when I was in Korea, uh, when I met you, which was my girlfriend at the time wanted me to Skype or something. But I got all freaked out because I don't like to see my own face. And uh, so... I just didn't do it. I, I almost refused. It, 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 it caused a little, you know, uh, friction. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, is that, I'm just is, new to all this stuff. Is, is that why she's now the girlfriend at the time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll put, yeah, I'll put, yeah. Yeah, you said, well, I was going to comment. You said that it caused friction. I was going to say it probably caused a lack of friction. Oh. Oh, yeah, by that time. Oh, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. You were in Korea. It's easy to find no friction yeah. there. Um, if, if, yeah, that was if you look, again probably the cause of the friction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you, oh! You're in Korea and you don't want to Skype me? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know the the common denominator is always me being an asshole. <laughs> so fair is fair. <laughs> so. that, that does happen. That does happen. Um, hey, man. Uh, I, I got untangled this weekend. What's that? Uh, it, untangle is a software that you can put on your router to help monitor bandwidth and see what bad sites and uh, stop hacking from coming into your house and all that kind of good stuff. Um, eight days into the cycle, we were at 44% of our monthly bandwidth cap of one terabyte. So... I had to do something and I tried that. And I got to tell you, man, I... I'm I'm getting to the point now where it's not even fun to goof off with this shit. Like I'm just tired of stuff not working the way it's supposed to. 
and the, the the when you're living in a world of of internet caps, I don't understand why it's so hard to find something as a as a as a you know just a, for a residential address that will tell you what devices are using how much bandwidth. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean instantaneously. Like every router out there would tell you, well, this one's using it right now. The fuck I care about right now. I need to know how much it's used all month. Right. So that right. I can so that I can go and address the bad actors and stay under my cap. If my kids are watching YouTube while they're sleeping, that's something I need to know. You or know? even a tool that that could help you to throttle the the bad actors. Right. But of course you can't you don't know what the bad actors are until you know it's just it's it's so fucking frustrating that this very and, and they're already doing it. They're already telling you what's using it right now. All they need to do is keep record of that. Right. Kid, I really yeah. I thought you were going to say throttle the children. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, sometimes it comes down to that. It, it, that's that's when they start going around your uh, your measures, you know, and they start costing you extra money. Like, oh, uh, yeah, there's only so much internet to go. Value. Yeah, there's only so much internet to go around, and you ran out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's just it's just so frustrating. And now, like, my switches aren't working because the Wi-Fi network has changed and this and that. And it's just, it's like, I had to re reboot Alexa to get her to, to understand. I, I still don't like referring to robots and, and AI as, as, as he or she, we, we seriously need a fucking, a, a non-sexual pronoun for things. That's oh, not, like it. That just, well, just, not just it, because you can't call a person a it. You can call them, well, a, you can call them a they, like we need, we need a hermaphroditic term for everybody. That's what we need. Um, hermaphroditic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife sent me hey, my wife sent me a, a thing on Facebook about somebody, some dude in Thailand or some she he in whatever some uh, 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 hermaphrodite in Thailand hey. impregnating themselves and what? actually bringing it to <laughs> bringing it to bear, having twins, and both of them were hermaphrodites. What? It, it's like it's like it's like not the first that's fake news. It, There's I, no it, way. Yeah. That's 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 where I was at. But whatever, it was on like CNN or some shit. Like you know, we, I can't get any less fake than that fake, right? Isn't that true? <laughs> I got it. I link, got it on CNN.com. Link or it didn't happen. <laughs> oh um, my god! But yeah, I was like that, that. That that would just be. Have you seen? Um, Oh shit! What is that movie where all the women start just procreating by themselves and the men are just relegated to uh, Jurassic Park? N- no, jackhole. <laughs> uh, it's an actual movie, not some little fake shit you put in your mind. Um, <laughs> girls and um, it's like it's something like No Man Beyond This Point, where in like the '60s, right after the uh, the Second World War, you know, right as everything's starting to recover, women start having girls just out of nowhere, like, Hey, I'm pregnant. Uh, I haven't had sex yet, but I'm pregnant. So, and here's a girl and they just start procreating that way. And so men are like basically phased out and putting these concentration camps and shit. Like they're like, oh, there's a man, you know? And at one point, like there's two dudes or three dudes talking. And so little girls like, Hey, you got, you aren't supposed to be in groups of more than two, you know? And it, it's, it's an amazing look at how useless men actually are. <laughs> Dude, I think that's Gremlins. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty much every movie ever. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's it was pretty good, and that's kind of how how I felt about this. Like that's that's going to be what's happened. The uh, one hermaph- hermaphrodite has another one, and then they have more, and then they just like it just keeps going. So like uh, uh, unisexual people, like like the three of us. I'm assuming Clint. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, next thing you know, it, like we're all phased out because, well, we need another person to procreate. Like, you know, it's, it's just, it, I don't know. Uh, that, that was an interesting thought process. My mind went through after having seen the movie. And if you haven't seen no man beyond this point, go watch it. It's on Netflix It'll this, or, or is, Amazon. Is this not an, an old movie? This is an, a, uh, a, a current. It's, it's like thing? a 2003 movie. Oh, wow. And you also stand by. You think this the the link of the hermaphrodite? I don't know if you're allowed to use that word. I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't know another word. I, look, blame it on my ignorance. I don't actually, know. I'm not, I'm not saying. Oh, I don't a, either. I'm not saying it derogatorily in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> hermaphrodite, but is is, is is so? You think that was real too? 
I actually, I almost have to abandon this podcast and look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the show. I, I, need, I need to know about the hermaphrodite. <laughs> this is fascinating. Um, it's a tw- 2016 movie, No Man Beyond This Point, and it's actually on YouTube. Like you can just go to YouTube and watch the whole damn thing officially. Oh, without even paying for it. It's yeah, just a, no, it's like it's like public domain. Uh, well, no, I guess I guess you do have to pay for it. I don't know. Fucking go look it up. It's really good. It's on Amazon or Netflix, one of the two. Um, it's like an hour and a half long. It's pretty good. <clears throat> so, what were we talking about? Where what what's going on? Like this show is like there there are no rails. Rails are. I don't gone. know, man. You're talking about watching watching movies on YouTube. Uh, there's something really cool that everyone uh, will be. Yeah, let me fix my speech. Holy cow! Um, there's something really cool that people will be able to watch next week mm. that we actually put out into the world months ago. Oh, I don't know. Uh, three months ago was it? Two, um, three months a ago. A while ago. Uh, for our patrons only. And if you go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and become one of our patrons, you could get it right now. But it's been long enough, man. We're going to release the Gloria Young interview out into the wild for all the masses to see next week. Yeah. Um, And why? Because we are not going to have a live show one week from today. Right. Why? Because... We are going to be at Nerdtacular. Right, in where? Over Utah. Oh, see, it's in Utah. We're going to be in Utah. We're going to be hanging out in Utah on a Thursday night. How can we, Thursday how, night. like, it's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Nerdtacular, if you're not going, I'm sorry. If you are, I'm sorry. And, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, um, I, I look forward to seeing everybody that's going to be there. Um, we, you never know. We may end up doing some sort of a live stream. I don't know. It probably depends on the Wi-Fi quality in the hotel. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but as of this time, we are not planning a show. Um, but we will be involved with, uh, with other things. Um, the have a drink show is, is as, putting on a, an event. As of this time, he's not planning a live show. I see. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. But uh, we're definitely going to be involved in, in I- events that others are putting on there. Yep. So uh, uh, don't be surprised if you see us uh, somewhere on the interwebs during that. Hey, Kent, it's uh... a... <laughs> oh, go ahead, what go is ahead. that, by the way? I'm just asking all these questions. Sorry, I, I just... I came we, on here to interrupt we, the we, conversation. We, we brought Clint on um, not to discuss his career and, and him being funny and uh, talking about stand-up comedi- comedy and funners and everything else. Oh, we'll um, get to that. We, we, uh, we, 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 we brought him on to ask us questions as we're going through as like a, a critical review while we're doing the show. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, but, well, you're uh, talking about all these fascinating things. <laughs> <laughs> Clint, to, to answer your question, Nerdtacular is a convention. It's basically, uh, it's a lot like this show. It's like a celebration of geekiness. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. So but Scott Johnson of the Frog Pants Network, uh, mostly a network of, of podcasts and um, internet streaming shows, um, all about geeky things, video games, uh, movies, things like that. Uh, it, it's an annual, well, it's become an annual thing. Uh <laughs> The you, celebration. You say of, annual, except for last year, and except for every year after this. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> the last one. Uh, he did it for nine years straight, uh, skipped Eight. a year, and then Eight years. Uh, he's doing it. This one is like kind of the big finale to the endeavor. Yeah, uh, but it's it, it's going to be fantastic. Lots of fun. Um, so it's like Sturgis for nerds. There uh, you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that's not bad. That's 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 not bad. Um. It can't. What time is it? Um, it's it's time for Clint to participate what? in something. No way. No, no. He's here just to observe. <laughs> observe and interrupt. Uh, that's that's what he's here for. <laughs> yeah, observe and interrupt. <laughs> hey, hey, Clint. Hey, Clint. Are you ready? Can I talk? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Amos, push the button. <laughs> Third wheel this thing. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. 
All right, Clint, the way this goes, you've got about a minute to just state your your mind, say whatever it is you want to say. I'm going to give you topics. I'm going to give you five topics, one at a time. Once I say it, you just go just go off on it. And then when you hear this sound, you're going to stop and get your next topic, and then you're just going to go off on that. Are you ready? Oh, my God. This sounds stressful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New York City. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to talk about <laughs> I'm being choked up by the heat. <laughs> I'm in New York City now. Am I right? You won't let me turn my air conditioner on because apparently that interferes with the show. Uh, so I'm you're sweltering. I'm listening to you talk about the heat. I'm jealous of that dog. Uh, <laughs> Hecklers, am I right? Oh, man. <laughs> That's what I've been doing to your show. <laughs> I've been pro heckler for the last hour. It's been a blast. <laughs> this has been the most fun I've ever had in comedy. Because... Catwalks, am I right? I... <laughs> Fucking curveball, man. <laughs> uh, catwalks, absolutely. I've been pretty good at this exercise up until that time. <laughs> Dude. Oh, I hope that thing was. Rob Thomas, am I right? Jesus. Um, I had that album. <laughs> <laughs> that first Matchbox 20 album, it was alternative. <laughs> uh, and finally, the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? You guys, are, this is great. This, uh, I hope you win. Oh, I keep dropping the sides. I keep dropping the nerd. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, uh, I hope you win the nerd. No, it's not a contest, right? <laughs> I hope you win the nerdtacular volleyball uh, annual volleyball tournament. <laughs> Uh, excellent that was fun man thank you thank you Holy for participating crap. That. like i gave oh. you a choice um <laughs> wow that went over completely different than i ever thought it was gonna go <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh man fucking love you. um uh yeah so so joke bond points out that it's gonna be a nerd ball nerd, uh, a sports nerd ball ner yeah a, a nerd ball game so uh, yeah, I, I I didn't know about that. I'll be looking forward to that. I hope we win. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been oh, there uh, is a sports. I, I've been I've been working on uh I've been working on my uh, my nerd ball technique. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know what that is exactly, but I've been working on it. It's, it's way better now than it was five minutes ago. I I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I hope um, you get an update. <laughs> I'll, so, I'll, I'll be so sure to hit you, hit you up on Facebook and tell you the results of the nerd ball. I can't wait. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so Clint, uh, we, we've already told everyone that you do stand-up comedy. Um, can you tell us a, a little okay. bit about that? Like, wh How did you get into that, and um, uh, what keeps you motivated to continue doing it? Um, yeah. You know what? Actually, I did something kind of like what you guys did, sort of. Uh, I started 14 years ago, um, which I should be – Better, I should be uh, <laughs> better. Yes, uh, <laughs> more successful. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things, but um, anyhow, a lot of those career milestones uh, seem to escape me. Um, but I started. Uh, I was an audio engineer uh, at a at Muzak. I don't know if you remember the company. I think it's uh, hmm. the belly up, but the elevator music company, and everybody was in bands, and everybody was uh, getting attention for it, and uh, I. Always wanted to try it. So instead of doing open mics, they had um, uh, a workshop, and I took the workshop and pretty much started getting work pretty early on, and I, I did well. And then I quit my job way too soon, and uh, everything fell to shit. Uh, but I still kept doing stand up, um, and moved to New York City 18 months ago, and I'm living in. Uh, a little piece of hell in New York City. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, it's still, uh, yeah, I've been traveling a good bit in those last few years. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's just been great. Yeah, being in the military, one of, one of my favorite things uh, throughout my 20-year career was the travel. Like just being able to go to new places and just experience the cultures. Um, is that is that one of the, the perks that you enjoy? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I like anywhere new. Like we were talking about the Southwest, which I don't go. I could go to Tucson here and there, but and I, you know, New uh, New Mexico. But um, yeah, my problem was, well, I can't. I don't want to shit on anything, but I, I I've worked a lot of the same places a lot. So some of those we get. Hmm. Some of the back. I mean, I started in the south, southeast. So some of the places mm-hmm. I started were a little bit um, backwoods. Wow, that's a long way to answer your question. And it turns out, yeah, I love meeting new people. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm curious where where would new you want to go? Like, if you could if you could put on a, an act or put you know put on a show anywhere in the world, just pick any city. Where where would that be? Oh, I don't know. Like when I I did the South Korea thing, that was amazing. I'd never I had actually never been out of the country until I did that gig, which was kind of cool. Uh, so it was like stand up taking me somewhere to another part of the world. Um. And there are a lot of places I don't I, – I feel like uh, in America, um, I've never worked in Denver or something like that. I think that would be probably a cool spot. Um, Alaska, I make that happen. Um, uh, <laughs> it was uh, actually a cool chuck club there. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of places. And, of course, I'm in New York, so this is sort of the, the mecca for comedy. Although, um, yeah, I mean a lot of the shows are just like – people's – I have, uh, people are uh, they can see a great show all the time so there's no real reason for them to pick yours <laughs> a lot of the time. Uh, so you're, yeah I, I, the competition is a lot, very uh, uh, yeah. very fierce it, it's, it's kind of the uh, uh, I'd almost say like the, the, the sweatshop of, of the comedy world right like everybody goes there you, you, you take all of your all of your licks and everything else and if you're still standing at the end of it you might have a chance of making it big yeah, that's a good way of putting it, actually. Yeah, sweatshop, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, that's exactly it. Because I, I feel like, because I moved here when I was 12 years in, so it, I, it, it doesn't matter what, you, uh, what you've what you accomplished. You still have to like sort of start in the back of the line regardless. So I feel like uh, people that are 10 years younger than I am are, are handling that a lot better. better. Just, mm. You know, yeah. Um, now, just um, the adjusting to all that. last week we we uh, we we talked to uh, Paul Smith and he he talked to us a lot about how it, how it is becoming you know becoming a comic and, and the you know do, paying your dues and working your way up and stuff like that and uh, he mentioned a few movies and I was wondering if you if you'd seen these and then this is like if I can find my list there we go um, I am uh, I am comic and comedian uh, and if you could relate to how those actually really reflect on the way that you've come up as a comedian. Yeah. I am comic is the one with the guy who came back. Right. He, yeah. uh, yep. So what he, I guess, yeah, he had, he had taken some time off and then come back, gotten sober and come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is exactly what I kind of did also. So I, uh, I was, I, I went through a couple of years where I only took, I wouldn't say I was out of it completely, but I was only taking a few gigs a year. I was in Mississippi for whatever random reason that was, uh, which wasn't good for comedy in the least. Um, the bad move. But they don't have a club or, um, or sense of humor. But that's neither here nor there. I, mean, I guess that's fitting if they don't. But, um, but no, uh, I did that uh, in 2013. I, st- I came back like my home comedy town, which is Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and went back trying to get back on the road sober. And uh, so, yeah, I like that that documentary especially. I like a lot. Comedian is about Seinfeld, who is like starting over as a millionaire, right? Yeah. So that was a little bit harder for me to relate to. <laughs> Fair enough. What a great problem to have. <laughs> hey, something that we've been talking about lately is is hecklers. Um, do you have any good heckle stories? Yeah, I've, yeah, too many. Um, <laughs> the one that jumps out, I, I think I got heckled by a kid, a child one time and I was out of my mind drunk and I deserved to be leveled and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, he did it. Um, <laughs> I just remember I was so drunk. I was repeating jokes and there was an improv troupe that had to, uh, performed before me. And I guess they had brought this kid as part of their troupe or, or maybe sketch or whatever it was. And uh, in the middle of one of my jokes, I was like, 
And I just remember the kid going, you're not done. <laughs> and that just brought me to my knees. <laughs> oh, wow. man. Scarred me to this day. It was like 10 years ago. <laughs> is, is that why you're so real? That kid's face. <laughs> It might have started things. <laughs> All rolling. <laughs> I went. I was six more. I, I stayed in the trenches six more years after. Oh geez. Um, I don't know. I, I watched. Yeah. I, I watched some videos lately on uh, comedians and hecklers and things like that. It's it's, it's like when you you know we we have back to back comedians on the show. So what am I watching on YouTube? I'm watching comedians and shit. You know. And I saw saw some of these these heckler videos and um you know you, you look on YouTube and you get the Heckler owns, uh, you know, the, the, the comedian on stage or, or comedian, uh, uh, comedian, um, uh, smashes Heckler so bad his girlfriend leaves him and, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I, without having a, having a dog in the fight, all those things are hilarious. Like anytime you can, somebody's like just so awful on stage that someone in the crowd can just smash him down or vice versa. Someone's just ignorant in the crowd and the comedian on stage just wipes the floor with them. I'm a happy guy. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a good cause cause the crowd is basically going to go with whoever's right, you know? And it's, it's just fun to watch. Now I, I agree with you. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's me who, again, I've, I've been on stage as comedian once I've done a little bit of improv, but I've never been heckled by someone I didn't actually know and have beers with right afterwards. So <laughs> <laughs> like my, my, my scope of experience is, is very small. <laughs> have you I, have you ever owned I, a heckler i'm sure i've had my moments <laughs> I, I, yeah i think i have and time. the problem like i've seen some of those things and i agree with you like um they make for like really good youtube clips and stuff i've seen people that are good at that thing make that their thing though and they kind of bait people into heckling them mm -hmm. which i think is a little cheap mm. uh i so when it happens organically, when somebody acts up and, it, like, uh, and, so, and then they get smashed for it, then it's funny. But I've seen actually somebody open the floor to people and then smash them. Watch me do it. Oh, that's what he gets for doing exactly what I told them to do, which was yell out for my show. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit cheesier to me. But, yeah, uh, they some of those videos are really funny. I mean, some of those guys are really, really good at it. I mean, you've seen the videos. Now, um, one of the things that I'm noticing lately is the, uh, the, the, the comedian battles, like, you know, the, the, this battles or whatever, where they're talking shit about each other. Oh, the Rose. Battle. Yeah. 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 The, I, why uh, is this something new? Because this is something I just now noticed and I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I, I, it's more popular than it's ever been. Uh, yeah, I, like, yeah, it's the, it's the most popular thing in, I think it's going right now as far in stand up. It's, it's I think people, I don't know, maybe they just wanted to see people ratchet it up. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's like rap battles, but instead of just, you know, rapping and making fun of them, like you, you actually, you're actually given the time to tell a joke. So if it's, if, if you need 30 seconds to tell the joke, you can actually build up to it and maybe have, you know, then come back with your own punchline. Um, in, in the way, at least the way that I've seen it is once they deliver that punchline, they get their laugh or not. The other comedian gets like a one line yeah. response and then can go into their joke. So it's, it's, it, it's, it's got like a format to it, man. It is when you watch a good one. Oh, and, and it's not oh, always, it's not always derogatory. It's not always just smashing the other person down. Sometimes it's just saying you're not funny, you know, and yeah. you know, and nothing, nothing hits bigger than one comedian telling another, you know, blah, 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 blah. You're not funny. And then the other person comes back with something and it bombs. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just like point to order. You're done. Just step off. Just done. You're walk away. <laughs> yeah. Here's evidence of that. Evidence of that, sir. <laughs> is, is, no, is, I agree. Is that, is that something that you're into? Is that something that you do that I need to go look I, on YouTube and find? What's going on? I no. I, I suppose I should just because I think that that's that's what's really really popular right now. I, I don't know. I don't know if because I I think the guys I've seen it done and like. Uh, some of the people that are really, really good, especially here in New York, man, um, it's like a skill set within its, of itself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, like that's not something I've ever practiced or anything. And some of those people that that's like that's their thing. So I'm almost uh, nervous about I me. Mean, that would be like <laughs> completely starting over. Again. 
and of course you're you're you're, uh, you're getting uh, torn to shreds. So, right. Yeah, it's it's got to be great for your confidence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one of those things. Just, you, that's one of those things you really want to win the first one. The first the first time you step <laughs> out, you want to win that first one. <laughs> Yeah, it's like prison. You got to beat up the toughest guy or something. Yeah, you got to walk in there swinging and hope somebody yeah. hope somebody goes down before you do. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to the stage for the first time. Oh, never mind. He's not coming back. <laughs> uh, first and only time. There you go. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, hey, uh, so have you ever had an old friend of yours like just pop up out of the blue, like say after 20 years and just find you on Facebook? What? Yeah. Maybe. Tonight, I had a buddy of mine from Shaw when I was st- still stationed in South Carolina, my first assignment. Haven't seen him in 20 years. We used to have like scientific discussions and stuff like that back before I had the, the wherewithal to understand what the hell difference between centrifugal force and centripetal force it was. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, I don't he, even know what you just said. <laughs> And he reached out and uh, f- sent me a friend request on Facebook. And it's literally been like 19 or 20 years since we talked. And him and I just had a nice little chat. And then I look over. I was his 666th friend. Oh, God. And I was like, I was like that's, that's, I mean, even if it doesn't mean anything, it kind of means something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does now. <laughs> oh, geez. You made a deal with the devil to get your friendship back. Apparently, apparently. Um, or he did. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, one is going down. <laughs> or both. <laughs> or both. Yeah, I don't even know how many friends I have, but I happened to look over and see that I was his 666th friend, and I was like, oh, huh. Oh, is oh, he shit. still in Shaw? Uh, no, he's actually... Um, at uh, shit, some U- U- uh, USC in California. Okay, he, he, I know. I, I, we, he did married. You and I talk about that. He he married a teacher, uh, and then he's been a twenty a twenty year student, a lifelong student. So, oh, so he's a doctor. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. I, I know that all the pictures of him and his wife are. They seem happy. Oh, so he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> now, Clint, you said you had a story about uh, USC. No, well, Shaw. I, uh, oh. This is my hometown. Oh, uh, I think we did talk about that after after the show last time. Um, Sumter. Yeah. Oh, oh, Scumter. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, Kent. It's Sutton. Sutton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sutton, yeah. South Carolina. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a hole that place is. I mean, it's your hometown and stuff, but even you got to admit, <laughs> there's a yeah, reason. You left. Admit. <laughs> there's a reason you left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's depressing. Man. Oh man, yeah. That uh, I, my parents, my parents still have a neighbor that literally doesn't have running water in his house. That is true, by the way. To this day, oh, does not have running water. He's got and, electricity. And, and I'm, I'm only half Shit. surprised by that. Like seriously. <laughs> Uh, that whole town is like it's like the town that life forgot uh, there's there's nothing going on there at all they, it is there's something very soulless i don't know there's like three town or three clubs and all three clubs are just like a a, a haven for uh miscreants and stds <laughs> yeah um so there's all that it's uh, the last pit stop before you pee, before you go to the beach i think that's really what. Yeah, because you, if you leave Sumter, like you don't see another town until you hit Myrtle Beach. There's nothing on the way. There's no. There's no stops in between yeah. there. It's yeah. You're either going. You're either on your way to Columbia or on your way to Myrtle, Be- Myrtle Beach. That's yeah. absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, no, prison and farms in between. <laughs> and even the prison is like you know the people don't want to leave the prison because there's nothing around it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're good. <laughs> they, they only lock the gate. They, so leave much, the, they leave the gate wide open. The guys are like, no. Yeah, we, it's, we, it's funny you say that because it kind of do. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we got running water and electricity here. Uh, we'll just stay. It's cool. <laughs> it's, just good. it's just good out there as it is in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, it's it, uh, is, it, is it about this time?
All right, Clint, uh, you picked it this week. Why don't you tell us about Guar? I don't, you know, I don't know as much about them as I've never seen them live. I mean, I kind of know about them, but, uh, but I'm, I'm fascinated. I've always wanted to see them live. This is art rock. Well, I, how would you describe it? Uh, art rock? A, a, it, rock art or art metal. rock? I mean, it's it, either way. It's, it's like this, this yeah, fusion it, it's of. It's like, um, it's like punk core metal, punk metal. I don't know. It's a. Uh, With costumes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, I've it's, always wanted to go just for the spectacle. Would, would it be like rock play instead of cosplay? I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so what, what were actually... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what we're actually talking about is a little little talk where... Um, and I don't even know if we have the details on it. Uh, it. Dr. Michael Bishop comes on and talks about Guar and regional identity in Richmond, Virginia. And this is a, during a TEDx RVA, which is TEDx Richmond, Virginia. Um, and he, he talks about how the strife of the early eighties is really what led to the availability of a, of a band like Guar to go out and play rock and roll and have the artistry and have the drama and have the storytelling. And because of the way that the, of Richmond's, uh, the way that Richmond was set up and the, the poor neighborhoods that were just completely ravishing the, the city. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just Richmond did not have a lot of money in the early eighties that it allowed these, these few creatives to find this one space. And with so many creative minds in one space, something was bound to come out of it. And for this particular instance, that was Guar. Yeah, yeah dude, like these, these guys are creative in so many ways. They're not only are they great musicians, but they, they're storytellers. They're um, artists, like visual artists. Uh, they, they, they're just like the most creative group of people that could have found each other, uh, you know, in one place at one time, you know, pre internet, mm -hmm. they found each other, you know, and it's, I don't know. It's a, it's a fascinating story. Yeah, they're, uh, Clint, what, is, what, what are your am, thoughts? Almost. Hmm. No, I mean, I just think it's fascinating. The whole thing, I mean, the backstory and all that stuff. And then the Ted talk really like, uh, cause I, 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 I've been to Richmond, but not, I haven't spent a lot of time there, but then how it relates to, um, to what Rich, Rich, Richmond represented, also with the you know the the old cigarette money and the you know uh, tobacco money, I should say, and uh, uh, you know the use of the word slavery and stuff. It was uh, I don't know. It's all, the whole thing is just really fascinating. Um, yeah. there, there's yeah. one point that they show basically the evolution of Guar, uh, all the people that are involved in the other stuff they've done, um, and there's just so. I mean, the band's what thirty years old now, coming up on thirty years. Um, yeah. And there is so much, so many people, so many groups of people involved in every iteration of this band and their offshoots and how it kind of commingles and, and it's is really really good. I, I enjoyed it. I've never been much of a, a Guar fan by default because of, of lack of exposure. Um, but I mean, I've known who they were and I guess who they are, you know, really. And uh, th this is one of those things that really it was it was fun to watch and interesting to uh to see the progression of yeah yeah definitely um so, yeah i think it's really hey clint we we do something on the show where uh we like to send people out to where our guests are from or maybe where they live or maybe where they work and we, we have them dig through the trash and find uh you know just old old tidbits scraps of paper maybe um just various things from from the people's lives and our scouts found something uh, on you. It was actually a, um, I, I think this was from a booking agent for a comedy club from like 15 years ago or something. What, wouldn't you say, Amos, is that probably where this came from? Yeah, this is a, this is, this is from a while ago and it's really, in I mean, we always have, I mean, we got a little spies everywhere and we always find this, in these interesting things about people. And um, this one is, I mean, you can really tell that this is from South Carolina. Like my experience in South Carolina is really wrapped up in, in, in this story. And, um, I mean, take that for what you will is it's, it's awkward in its own special way. That's, that's kind of, that's kind of <laughs> South Carolina. Right. Um, so, uh, me, me too, I guess. <laughs> see, that's just how it works out. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and read this and, uh, um, Kent, do you want to read the first line and I'll go, we'll just alternate from that. Yeah, so yeah, this is kind of like a, a, a Q and A form. Yeah. And uh, so 
uh, who's reading first? You're oh, going to read first, Amos. Uh, I can read first. I, I can do the questions. You can do the answers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's yeah. And when I when I read the answers, this is Clint's response to the question. Yep, yep. Oh no, yep. Jesus. So, um, I mean, uh, uh, l- l- lace them shoes up tight. Uh, oh no. <laughs> question number one: Were you always a stand-up dog? No. I had many sweaty jobs in my nerdy lifetime. I started out as a used Jenga salesman. And then, for 18 years, I sold ladies people. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Um, when did you discover you were a funny friction who could make people throttle out loud? <sighs> it was in school. This the first time our teacher had us do show and heckle, I made the sweatshops in my class laugh so hard they fell out of their roast battles. Wow. Um, okay, okay. And... um. <laughs> How would you describe your popular act? I am a thinking person's miscreant. So, so I, I, what, I, the question I want to know, Clint, is um, did you get the gig? <laughs> God, who transcripted all this stuff? <laughs> 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 It's our, it's our, like, uh, our agents that we sit to the world to find these things. Yeah, so. yeah this, is, this isn't, I mean, this is this is word for word. I mean, this isn't, uh, <laughs> it's not like we're just making I up random shit. I didn't need to shit. download this roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, that, that was pretty good. Um, hey, uh, we got uh, we got uh, next week's, uh, well, next week's show is already kind of like laid out. We're already done with that because it's going to come out. Uh, it's already scheduled to come out on Wednesday. Really fun interview with uh, Gloria Young, Justin Robert Young's mom. If you're in Diamond Club, uh, you damn well better know who that is. <laughs> and uh, that, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, we'll see everybody at Nerdtacular, of course, on Wednesday, right? We arrive Wednesday morning? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Wednesday morning. Um, and have you ever been in Salt Lake City, Clint? I have not. No, I, I don't know. I've been to Utah, but not, not Salt Lake City. Same here. So it I, sounds like a lot of fun, actually. I, I've really. driven through like the backwoods area on my way to Colorado, uh, on the way on my way to Denver to go through Colorado. Um, but I've never, I've never been to Salt Lake City. It's gonna be, it's a little bit of yeah. touristy stuff. Same, same. So is this a party? Do you guys all just party down for for a week or, or whatever? It's a few days. Like, uh, it, it's a couple like days. Potter. Yeah, there's a uh, there's there's uh, it's, it's a convention. So there's actual like. Um, like scheduled events, yeah, scheduled events and things like that over the two days. And there's uh, some game rooms and some family fun. And then the after hours is kind of like whatever happens. So I think one night there's going to be like a cigar party, and another another time is going to be like a drink tasting or whatever. And it's kind of just it's just whatever. So Wait, prostitutes? Um, how crazy does this whole uh, uh, You have to go to the uh, the tabernacle for that. I how think. heat missed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to like uh, shit on because I don't know anything about nerd culture. I know it's really big, you know, this stuff now. But how uh, honestly, like when I, I just said prostitutes because that was the first word, but that came to my mind. But uh, <laughs> is there any hedonism involved in the in nerd uh, of the? So there's three big events for for Diamond Club and uh, I guess for Frog Pants uh, for the for the Venn diagram that is the two. Um, you have South by Southwest, you have Nerdtacular, and you have Dragon Con. Nerdtacular is the family oriented one. It's the family friendly version of the three, which isn't to say that there's no uh, hedonistic activities. It's just uh, a matter of it's it's more tamed. It's more there's kids around kind of stuff. It's more con- yeah contained. I think <clears throat> would be yeah the best um, word to describe it. Now me and Kent haven't been to Dr- Dragon Con, so we don't know how that goes. I've heard stories uh, that that's kind of the far flung like there's certain things that just aren't mentioned at, at, at coming out of Atlanta. <laughs> Like um, debauchery central. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> because nobody lives there. Nobody's actually from Atlanta that's really in the Diamond Club. I'm, I'm sure there's a couple of people, but everybody has to travel there. Meanwhile, South by Southwest, like half of Diamond Club is in South by Southwest or in Austin. So it's kind of like this. The, it, it's, the, it's the middle ground. It's the safe middle ground where, you know, you can you can go and get <laughs> stupid crazy, but someone's going to remember to bring you back to your bed that night, you know? Uh, ah. <laughs> Wow! I, I didn't, right. All you, these you, little subsets. You might go to Dragon Con and never come back. That's that's how that goes. That's. <laughs> I would hope so. That's the risk you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. You know they have an ironic strip club in uh, in Atlanta, because I I went to a comedy festival there and they, that's one of the after parties. Like, 
Really? They have a strip club. Yeah, it's all elderly women. I mean, not to say that they aren't attractive, but uh, um, that you know, would some be, of them are very. That would be amazing. That'd be something I would drag Kent to and just laugh and laugh and laugh as he tried to find a reason to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to send you the, the banana yeah. show in Okinawa. I, but see, I'm the kind of person that would take Kent to like a gay strip club and just sit there and watch him writhe in agony. Like, why? Why are we here? <laughs> this is not. I'm cool with everybody here, but I don't want to be one of the people here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, hell, that's that, that's probably something that I would do to you as well. So that might turn into a game of chicken, and that could get out of hand. I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, or in hand, I guess. Um, hey, uh, so we uh, we have. Oh we, boy. We have some Diamond Club news <laughs> other than Diamond the other than Nerdtacular, we actually have some Diamond Club news this week. Can't you want to go ahead and go with that? Uh yeah, definitely. So everybody in Diamond Club has probably already heard that Brian Brushwood's scam school has been picked up by the Science Channel to be on an actual television show. Mm-hmm. Um and that premieres this Saturday morning on the Science Channel. Um but uh W Scott is one and M Beam wanted us to announce to the world uh, that the Diamond Club Game Party is planning an all-nighter stream tomorrow night, so Friday, the 23rd of June, in honor of the Scam School Network Television debut on the Science Channel. The stream begins at 10 p.m. Eastern, Friday night, and ends at 7 a.m. just before Brian starts up his live viewing party. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, if you've ever done this, th- this is uh, the Jackbox games, typically, uh, that's in the, um, how do, how do we get to that? Is that the, um, uh, that's the discord, right? In the diamond club discord, yep. diamond club discord, in the, um, Joe Mon, help me out. Is this the, uh, Jackbox fuckos channel? Yep. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it, so, it should be this. That's why that channel's there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, Jack, Jackbox fuckos. Uh, yeah. So check that out. That's for sure. Going to be a blast. They're going to be going all night long. Until just before Brian starts there, up, his there we go. Uh, bad, bad. We've just dropped a link in the chat. It's bit.ly slash na discord n a d i s c o r d. Cruise on by there, and you'll you'll get into the Night Attack Discord, and from there or the Diamond Club Discord, I guess, which which whichever one they're going to call it today. And then you just go down to the uh, group and find Jackbox Fuckos, and you can join in the games, and all the details will be there. Yeah, hell yeah, that's gonna be a blast, man. I'm I'm gonna try to make my way over there. Um, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And then of course everybody needs to, if you have access to the Science Channel, uh, you need to check out Scam School on there as well. We need to to bump up Brian's uh, I, it, num- see, it's, Nielsen, Nielsen numbers. It really surprises me that Scam School is the one that got picked up and not Modern Rogue. Like I could see Modern Rogue getting picked up for this for the science channel before scam school because it just it's it's all about like science and how things are broken down and how to blow shit up and you know yeah uh, night attacks yeah. more like it'd be it'd be good for or not night attack uh, uh scam school would be really good for like uh the alcohol channel or the uh <laughs> the, the psychology channel like those would be really good ones for for scam school but whatever i'm, I'm not i'm not knocking the dude he's yeah doing no, awesome. either way either way it's pretty awesome so um, yeah, everybody go check that out. Um, one more thing real quick. We do have a poll up on the Patreon. If you're a patron of our, of our lovely channel here, cruise on by there. Um, trying to get some stuff, uh, get some stuff done for, we're trying to make the show better. And the poll is step one in, uh, trying to get your, your input. Uh, we do have some swag coming, uh, to a random patron who, uh, decides to help us out with those. We're going to have several come over the next several weeks. And uh, if you want to get some sweet swag for free, cruise on by there. That's the best way to do it. Just go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and find the poll and uh, click on whichever option you think is the best one or uh, take a, take a selfie. If you can't find the poll, uh, make your own <laughs> poll and take a selfie and send that to us on Twitter at ritual misery. You can find Kent at RM underscore underscore Del Noche. If I can get it right, you fucking underscore sons of bitches. Yeah, uh, Clint, you are at Clint Nor. That's N O H R. Is that correct? That's it. Yep. So at C L I N T N O H R. You got to have the H in there, right? You just can't just can't be like N O R E. You got to throw the H in there. Ah, uh, you know what? I've never tried it without it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Maybe we can learn together. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what Do she said. Guys- did you guys uh, do, do Paul Smith talk a lot about video games and stuff? Because you know that's what he did 
when I went to Korea, here we go. <laughs> I just want to clear this up. I, probably, I don't want to take up your time. But he watched people play video games, which I've never seen anybody do in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to stay in his, for a couple of nights in his uh, apartment before I, I got my own. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah. He did talk about that. He, he. I guess daily. That's what he does. He, uh, he watches like the the pro esports and, and and beats off to elderly elderly ladies. Um, but that's. I mean, <laughs> was that post show? Was I not supposed to? Was I not supposed to mention that? That, that uh, might have been a patron exclusive. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was an exclusive podcast. Uh, there you go. Uh, we, uh, we, you can find all of our stuff at richmisery You can find me on uh, the old Twitter at Ethan Kane. Did we miss anything, Kent? Uh, uh, five I just star- wanted to call out Clint's website, uh, Clintnor dot com. It's got his schedule. It's a- got a uh, again with the H. Again with the H. It's N O H R. Clint Nor with the H. <laughs> yes. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know why I can't let that H go. It's, uh, the H has to be there. Um, <laughs> that's, that, that. Uh, you can find everything at ritualmisery.com, all the stuff that we're doing. Uh, don't forget Undaunted and Film Zone. if Kent and Lucas ever fire another one of those up. All that stuff's out there. And give us your five-star shitty reviews. We got, from, uh, got one from Crunchy. It was awesome. Uh, go ahead and go to iTunes, hit that five-star button, and just rip on the show as hard as you can. Uh, cause the text doesn't matter to anybody, but us, but the stars, everybody gets to see. So, uh, click cruise on over to iTunes, hit the old, uh, five star and just give us a, a really shitty review. Um, yep. Uh, there you go. Joe Mon says, rip that swamp ass review. There you go. Talk about all the swamp yep. ass in this show tonight. Um, and, uh, of course you can uh, comment on this episode directly on our Reddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. And now I'm going to hit this little music right here. That's gonna that's gonna start feeding into our, our ear bones soon. <laughs> Who do we have to thank for the music, Amos? Uh, that would be Kevin McLeod. Yep, from Incompetech.com. Uh, go check that out if you have a podcast or any other project that you need some free music for. <laughs> Hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I love how Kent has the like. I, I don't know if you can't hear it or if you just you're not sure when it's gonna hit that that volume oh. up mark or what. But every no, time, no, dude, it was it was silent until <laughs> it got loud. <laughs>